Hi, today we're going over section 6.6, .6, which is applications of rational functions. So essentially we'll be doing word questions with our rational functions. So for lots of word problems, a range of information given into a table can be helpful. So our first example is two friends share a paper route. Sheena can deliver the papers in 40 minutes and Jeff can do it in 50 minutes. How long would it take if they work together? So like I said, I'll arrange this into a bit of a table to help solve it. So we know we're given our time, so I'll make that as a heading. And then we know we have information for Sheena, as well as Jeff, and then we're solving for together. So we know Sheena can do it in 40 minutes, Jeff can do it in 50 minutes, and together, we don't know, we'll just call that T. Now I'm gonna add another column to this and I'll title it amount per minute. So if we're able to do the entire route in 40 minutes, that means every minute we're doing 1 40th of it. Same as with Jeff, if Jeff does in 50 minutes, every minute he's doing 1 50th of it. And together, if they take time t, they would be one over t. So essentially, if amount per minute that Sheena can do and Jeff can do, if we add those together, that should give us the amount that they can do it together in. So I would have one over 40 plus one over 50 is equal to one over t. Now our common denominator for this would be 200t, so multiply everything by 200t. So that gives us 200t over 40. plus 200t over 50 equals 200t over t. So 200 divided by 40 is five. So we have five t plus 200 divided by 50 would be four t equals 200t divided by t, the t's cancel out, so equals 200. So we have five t plus four t, that's nine t is equal to 200, divide both sides by nine. Now we get the time that would take them if they work together would be 22.2 minutes. Okay, a similar example, Lisa can paint the garage in three hours. Together, Jody and Lisa can do it in one hour. How long does it take Jody on her own? So we'll set this up the same way as we did before. So we'll have column for time. We also have Lisa as a label, Jody, and together. So Lisa on her own takes three hours. Together, it's one hour. And Jody, we don't know, we'll say that's T. Once again, we'll do how much. So for instead of per minute, we'll do per hour. So if Lisa can do the whole thing in three hours, that means she's doing one third of it every hour. Jody, it'd be one over T and together, be one over one, which is simply one. So the amount Lisa can do per hour plus the amount Jody can do per hour should equal the amount they can do combined per hour. So we have one over three plus one over T equals one. Now our common denominator in this case would be three T. So we'll go through and multiply each term by three T. So I'll give us three T over three plus three T over T 
equals free t. So our first one, threes will cancel out. So that gives us t plus, the next one, t's cancel out. So plus three equals free t. So at this point, I would move the t to the other side. So that gives us three is equal to two times t. Divide both sides by two. So three over two or 1.5 hours is how long it would take Jody. Okay, one last example. You're driving to the movies, which is 50 kilometers away. On the way back, traffic is busy, so your speed is decreased by five kilometers an hour. Together, the trip takes three hours. What was your speed on the way there? So set this up like a table. However, it's a bit more complex a question, so we'll have more information on our table. So we have the way there. We have the way back and total. Now our distance we know is the same on the way there and on the way back. It's 50 kilometers each way. In total, if I do 100 kilometers. Now speed. We'll say for speed on the way there was X, and then on the way back is five kilometers slower. So that'd be X minus five. Now our total time, if you remember back to science 10, you had an equation that related distance, speed, and time. And essentially your time is your distance divided by speed. So 50 divided by X would be the time for the way there. And 50 divided by x minus 5 would be the time for a way back. And we know that in total, it takes three hours. So the time for a way there plus the time way back should equal our three hours. So we've got 50 over x plus 50 over x minus 5 is equal to 3. So in this case, our common denominator would be x times x minus 5. So in this first one, the x is canceled, and that's when x minus 5 is canceled. So we have 50 times x minus 5, so that's 50x minus 250, and then we have 50 times x, so that'd be plus 50x equals three times x times x is three x squared, and then three times x times negative five, so minus 15x. Now we'll wanna move everything to one side because we can see that we have a quadratic. So we've got zero is equal to three X squared minus 115 X plus 250. Now looking at this, it doesn't look like it'd be easy to do a product sum factoring. So instead we'll use a quadratic formula. So if that was X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So we'll fill in our information. So we have x is equal to negative of negative 115. So that's positive 115 plus or minus the root of negative 115 squared minus four times three times our C value of 250 divided by two times our A value of three. Going through and simplifying this gives us S is, 
x is equal to 115 plus or minus the square root of 10,225 divided by six. We'll then go through and find both of our answers at this punch in our calculator. And we got 36 as well as 2.33. And then we'll compare these with what we add up here. Now, only one of these answers makes sense because the 2.33 if we put in for a speed for this one gives us a negative answer, which doesn't make sense. So 36 kilometers an hour would be our speed on the way there. Now practice for this section starts on page 595.